Hello everyone. We are going to cover a couple of slides, four slides from chapter three, which focuses on personality, attitudes, and work behaviors. So as a quick reminder, we are working it this way. Some slides are covered in lecture in the classroom and some slides will be covered online through uh, this medium here. So the slides that has the little video notation on them will be covered uh, in a video like this and you can just watch it at your leisure. So I'm going to skip the slides we're not doing the video on and I'm going to start right here talking about self-monitoring and proactive personality. So your chapter actually talks about uh, the big five framework prior to jumping into these slides. But aside from the Big Five framework, which is really the dominant personality theory, there's a whole host of other personality traits. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of personality traits that explain who you are in addition to the Big Five. And so uh, we're going to talk about four right here. They are self-monitoring, proactive personality, self-esteem, and then self-efficacy. So if you are a high self-monitor, it basically means that when you come into a situation, regardless of where that is at, with your friends, at work, at school, you pay attention to what is going on and then you sort of adapt your behavior accordingly, like a chameleon of sorts. So you pay attention to what people are doing, what seems to be working and what's successful, and then you act similar to that. Uh, to the other people in the room or to what you perceive the situation to be like. That is when you're high in self-monitoring. You might also have some friends that are very low in self-monitoring, right? They are just themselves, doesn't matter where they're at, and you just see their personality shine through, regardless of whether that is appropriate or inappropriate, or I should say maybe successful, more or less successful behavior in that situation. So we know that in companies and organizations, if you are high in self-monitoring, it's a good thing. You tend to be rated as a higher performer because probably you're reading the situation and you're delivering accordingly. Uh, we tend to see you as leaders. Uh, you make friends a lot more, so better at uh, networking. You're one of those social connectors. You are the friend in between groups and so you're able to connect groups together. Um, however, though, if you are a manager that is high on self-monitoring, you might not be as great as at doing the performance reviews. So you might actually want to avoid conflict and confrontation. And so you might just be doing more of the sort of um, everybody's great kind of a performance review. All right, so that's self-monitoring. And then we also have something called proactive personality. And in my reading of companies right now, this is a personality trait that they are really looking for. They want people who when they see a problem or a challenge or an opportunity that they take charge. They go after it, they go get it, they don't sit around and wait for somebody to tell them what to do. So having a proactive personality is really on companies' radar right now. So it basically just means that you use your own initiative to solve any problems or challenge that you see. Uh, partly this might make you a higher performer because you see those opportunities and you go after, the, after them. Your boss will see this and they think that you are good at what you're doing. And so you are seen as a high performer. You might also be able to understand the political environment much better. You're out there, you are trying to talk to people to solve problems, see what is going on. And that might also give you insight into who is doing what, who knows what, who is working on what within the organization, right? So that political landscape of all of the nuances on what is going on the corridor or the hallway talk. So uh, being proactive is something that is really seen as valuable right now, unless you are just running people over. If you're running people over, you are just running your own agenda. You think all, <laughs> all the things that you're working on are the most important, and you might just seen as too push, be seen as too pushy. So just be aware of uh, having that balance and step back if you're feeling a lot of resistance from people around you. All right, so be proactive. Think about situations when you have been proactive uh, and what that looked like, like your own behavior in those situations, and that will probably help you um, in job interviews when you're being asked about this. All right, self-esteem and self-efficacy. 
similar things but different. So self-esteem is really just your overall assessment of yourself. Uh, to hold something in esteem means to value it positively. So that's what self-esteem is. It's your overall assessment of yourself in a positive manner. Your overall positive feelings about yourself. If you are high on self-esteem, you also tend to have higher levels of job satisfaction. You feel better about your job. You tend to have higher levels of performance. You feel confidence. You believe in yourself. And you also tend to be more creative, right? Just feeling good about yourself allows you to like let that brain work and, and you feel creative in that sense. Those of us or those of you who are lower in self-esteem, we don't want to stick out, right? We don't want people to see if we do something that is not exactly right. We are afraid of negative feedback. And so they, these individuals tend to want to hide in larger organizations where maybe it is not as visible if something goes wrong. So attracted to positions where there are more invisible. And we tend to see those positions in larger organizations versus the small startups, right? So a bunch of high, high self-esteem people in those uh, startups and entrepreneurial ventures. Self-efficacy, the belief that you can perform a specific task successfully. So this is really kind of like narrow self-esteem. Right? So one task or one project or one thing that you're really good at or a few things. So you might have very, very high self-efficacy in certain areas and low self-efficacy in other areas. Right, So you might be an excellent uh, soccer player. So your self-efficacy around soccer is extremely high, but you don't feel as great academically like studying. So you might have low self-efficacy for that. And the thing is, if you don't believe in yourself, you're probably going to be right. Or if you do believe in yourself, you're probably going to be right. Uh, so you really want to try to work on having higher levels of self-efficacy. If you think you can do something, you're probably right. So working on that self-efficacy. Um, so those of us with higher levels of self-efficacy, obviously, tend to have higher levels of job performance. So this is really a great motivator. Knowing you can do something is a great motivator for people. And if you have high self-efficacy, you tend to set higher goals. You don't procrastinate as much. Uh, so generally just positive all around. And you can also help people around you uh, increase their self-efficacy by letting them know what you see about them that is so great. So that's the verbal encouragement, uh, which seems to increase self-efficacy. Okay, so... They did a cool study. This is just super awesome. So they had a group of Navy sales people, sail as in sailing, and they wanted to look at self-efficacy and whether or not people were going to throw up. <laughs> so they did a bunch of tests on these people in the Navy, and they told some of the people in one group that, hey, you really have a high seasickness self-efficacy, meaning that you don't really throw up even if it gets really rough out there on the sea and the rest of the group they did not get that message they just show saw the standard military training they saw people out on the water throwing up when the sea started to get a little rough and interestingly the people who were told that they were not going to throw up did not throw up that's just amazing it's a biological process if you're out on rough water you have a tendency to throw up that's what happens but these individuals were told they were not throwing up and they didn't. This is self-efficacy linked to a biological process. It's also called the Pygmalion effect. And you can read about that in your textbook. Lastly, for this quick video, is just how do we use all of this when we want to hire people? So individual different testing in employee selection. So we are trying to assess your personality because if you have the right personality for the job or the right personality for the organization, everybody's better off. You will be happier. You will be more productive. The company wants to keep you longer. And so we're just trying to assess who you are. And depending on the job, we are looking for different things, right? So if you are in a sales job, I'm probably going to want you to be extroverted. So we're going to look or measure you on extroversion. We do know that from the big five, that conscientiousness is the one personality trait that's the linked the best or most, most successfully to job performance overall, regardless of the job, regardless of the industry, regardless of the company. If you're high on conscientiousness, you're going to do better in the job, right? 
but it's very, very hard to assess conscientiousness in interviews. So we can test on it. There's like surveys we can do uh, for that to happen. So um, there is some concern around using personality testing because we are wondering when you're filling out these surveys, are you basically just fudging it a little bit? Or is it really the personality that you have that is shining through on these tests? Um, so current state of the um, scientific community right now is that, yeah, in general, these surveys give us some indication of your personality. So we can use them. They are valid to be used uh, if they have been statistically supported. They are valid to be used in selection, right, in employee selection. Because truth is everybody fudges a little bit. You might be more honest in the classroom where there's nothing writing on it than you would be in a hiring process when you really want that job. But generally, at the end of the day, we know that we can measure your personality and it will actually um, be linked to your job performance. But then again, the caveat is make sure you measure the right personality traits and that they are linked to the job. Otherwise, you shouldn't be measuring it anyways. All right. That's it for this one. Let me know if you have any questions. You know where to find me. That's all for right now. Uh, take care.